okay great so the recording has started uh, let's continue so we now will continue with the section here uh, in our notes in chapter 1 um, i am on page number 13 okay power and authority so since we are learning about spiritual authority um, we will see okay from the the life of jesus and what has been spoken of for believers uh, we see that when the lord jesus sent out his disciples to minister uh, he said that he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases this is in uh, matthew 10:1 uh, you see the same again repeated in mark 3:15 uh, mark 6:7 and luke 10:19 so what what did he say power over unclean spirits when we study that word power in the greek it is the term exousia okay and exousia has to do with authority privilege um a right or you could also uh, consider delegated authority so i give you power over it's like you know once again going back to our um uh examples of the owner and the tenant now the house belongs to the owner but the owner can give exousia or this is delegated authority or the right to the tenant and say i give you the authority to um you know let's say based on the contract if he says i give you the authority to um uh, do up the interiors whichever way you want so if someone comes and asks you these walls were pink how come you have uh, turned these walls blue you can say i have the authority i have been given the privilege or the right to do whatever i want to do in the premises here so it is the right to do okay it is the right to exercise um, uh, the uh, authority that has been given to a person so that is exousia exousia is basically to have the privilege or the delegated authority or right to do something so jesus coming back to our spiritual context here he told his disciples i give you the right now if someone asks us how can you uh, come against uh, you know demonic spirits how who told you that you can do something like this we have been given the exousia or this is the power associated with authority we have been given the authority we have the exousia jesus told us to do it we will do it okay so jesus gave his disciples exousia or delegated authority against the powers of darkness now the same word power see in english we have these words but uh, when we go back to the root words in their original languages we also find you know in the new testament where this term power is used in a slightly different way uh so luke 4:14 when jesus you know went into the wilderness he fasted he came back we read the then jesus returned in the power of the spirit to galilee the power of the spirit to galilee again power what does it mean in the greek there so when we look it up the term there is dunamis okay dunamis dunamis sorry refers to miraculous power so earlier power is exousia associated with authority now jesus came back with the power of the spirit or this has to do with miraculous ability miraculous strength miraculous might or miraculous power to do the works of god so when we say as believers you know we have been given authority from christ you know it is also associated with the power of god which is dunamis so exousia and dunamis go hand in hand we have the authority 
to cast out demonic spirits uh, but at the same time you know we we have the power of god to do his works okay so this also um, tells us that you know, we can do miraculous works of god uh, and uh, you know we can release his kingdom here on the earth so remember that you know we we have power against the enemy what kind of power is this we have exousia which is associated with authority so we can trample you know, serpents scorpions th th these are um uh, you know like uh, we say similes Th these are uh, comparative words that are used to describe demonic powers serpents scorpions it does not mean literal uh, scorp uh, serpents scorpions uh, you know some people in the interpretation of scripture they go literal and they say this is what jesus said he said yeah you can do all this and uh, it will not harm you but the understanding you have to let scripture interpret scripture so what is jesus actually saying he's saying here uh, that we can overcome the evil one we can overcome the demonic powers because we have the authority to do it and at the same time we have the dunamis okay we have the power the miracle working power of god working through our lives and thereby the enemy cannot harm us or the enemy cannot uh, you know uh, cause any destruction to us so as believers we must have this very clear in our hearts okay uh, another reason why uh, we want to emphasize this is because you know as believers uh, some of the thoughts we may have is you know if i if i um, cast out demon spirits you know what if uh, they will they will do something against me you know be believers have all these questions but when you really study believers authority you know we are understanding here jesus has given us the right and the privilege and the miracle working miraculous power is also at work in us so we are carrying both the exousia and the dunamis to do the work of god and jesus said that you know you will trample over serpents scorpions nothing by any means shall hurt you so that matter is settled so as a believer when i am exercising my spiritual authority particularly against the kingdom of darkness to be afraid and say what will what will these demon spirits do what if they do this what if they do that No, no. Go back to the verse. You know, even Luke ten nineteen. Nothing by any means shall harm you. That is settled. So, as a believer, I will go by the principles which are in God's word for me, um, and I can have the confidence that I have been given the authority. You know, uh, I'm not uh, trespassing any of the the principles that are given over there uh, with regard to authority. I'm doing it. you know by the book so uh, god is with me i can overcome the powers of darkness so that confidence is required in every believer after having studied the subject on believers authority um, again you know i would say meditate on this a lot because from my own life i can share with you um, see i am a very uh, if you go by personality uh, i am the kind of person who doesn't understand authority much okay i'm more of a friendly uh, sort of a person so authority you know that that whole concept to have authority exercise authority uh, it kind of showed in my in my walk as a believer so coming against the enemy uh, you know even in my prayers to to rebuke sickness disease or you know to bind the, the demonic works my prayers were never like that because i i was always a little more you know toned down sort of a person but meditating on this and you know for years uh, to be honest with all of you meditating on believers authority for years together learning about it hearing sermons meditating on the verses slowly you know i've had some of my friends in ministry uh, and they are very frank with me so earlier they used to tell me what you you pray such uh, um 
you know very as if you're fearful those kind of prayers be a little more bold no be a little more authoritative and i would be like i'm trying i know scripture and i'm trying but it's not happening but as i have been growing in my understanding of believers authority today uh, some of those same people you know they they encourage me and they say you're so different in the way you minister something has changed something has shifted but you know what it's the revelation what is believers authority how can i apply it in my personal life how can i fight for my rights as a a believer in whatever the enemy is doing in my family in my house uh, in my church right so when i pray even my church people many of them they tell me oh you have grown you know you have, you have grown so much uh, but you see it hasn't happened overnight same things that i'm teaching you for these things to become a reality to me and for me to walk in these things um i i will be you know i, I there's no shame in this but it's taken time okay uh, it's not as as simple as hearing it and believing it completely but meditating on it applying it seeing the power of god there are times once i i'll tell you there's a girl who came uh to uh, my congregation and uh, uh she she doesn't visit often uh but she came and she came for prayer and she came with uh, um like a like a tumor in her uh, elbow or arm she came and then she's like uh, ma'am please pray for me the moment i saw it frankly i got scared i was like oh my goodness what what do i do and i just said lord you lead me by your spirit to pray for this girl and she was very upset she said uh, you know that uh, uh, they have taken a biopsy they will tell me the results about this i don't know whether i, I shared this in your class or some other class uh, but they'll tell me the results pastor so please pray so i i just said holy spirit lead me the way you would want me to pray you lead me so more before i could you know quote scripture that's my general way of praying you know lord you have said your word says before i could go into that kind of prayer suddenly you know i i am finding myself saying things like i rebuke this tumor in the name of jesus you know i command you to dissolve and stuff like that and i'm like whoa what is happening uh, so you know really that authority it just kind of began to um, come through me and uh, i said all those things and i told her let me know you know keep me posted on how this goes what the doctors say and in a couple of weeks she came back and she said uh, i've had this for a long time uh, i don't exactly remember now how many months and if you could touch it you know because i was ministering to a lady i touched it and it was hard like a stone uh, and she told me ma'am it was so hard and it was uh, not getting resolved but that day when you prayed you know from that day something happened and it started shrinking you touch me now she came word of god don't be upset with yourself if you're the kind who is like i'm trying to understand this concept i'm still trying to apply this in my life it's okay just be after it okay till it becomes a reality in your understanding when it goes from theory concept to hey i believe this i live this and i'm you know moving ministering according to this that's when you see the uh, things changing okay so i i just want to encourage all of us uh, get the concepts in but i would say keep going back to it keep meditate from time to time i love the subject believers authority i just go back to it you know meditate on the same scriptures again and again okay genesis 1 26 27 um psalms 115 was uh, 116 or uh, um, psalm 24 was 1 you know luke 10 19 meditate 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 you know when we meditate what happens more than yeah i know this verse this is what it means more than that it becomes a reality 
in a, in my life and then you know i apply it i really apply you know exousia dunamis okay come on demonic spirits what are you doing it's not right what you're doing i'm going against you in the name of jesus so you know i just want to encourage you make the journey okay uh, it's uh, not about ticking off the concepts never so it it might also take a while for us to really start flowing in these things but you need to be a seeker so when you seek no uh, it will happen it will happen so it's really wonderful that you know we are we are getting the understanding even when you pray you say holy spirit help me to apply my authority and god will help us okay so that's about believers authority now let's move on to chapter 2 here notes and this is a little bit of an introduction uh, of satan uh, and his demons so where did this satan come from uh, and uh, how did he start interfering uh, in the world that god has created so when you look at the history or the origin of satan uh, people have written about it in scripture you know you would go back to uh, some of uh, the the things mentioned there and you know we we take all those verses and we try to understand the origin of satan we don't have a, a, a chapter where you know you're clearly told okay god created the world so he created man and from his rib he created the world. so we don't have that kind of a a, a passage that gives us a straightforward answer but from you know different passages we have to put this together and we also recognize that none of the human beings who have written uh, the bible have witnessed in history you know the the origin of satan because they didn't exist at that time you know it, mankind was created at a later point in time so whatever has been given for us in scripture it has come through revelation or revelation is you know god revealing something to us god revealing the truth to us so it's been captured through the revelation so there are some passages you know that uh, we can look at and uh, we can understand so in the book of genesis we see about the creation of the world Okay, Genesis one uh, talks about the creation of the world. When the world was created, you have the entrance of that cunning serpent that comes to deceive Eve. So, the understanding is the serpent already existed. Okay, or Satan, he already existed before the creation of the world. All right. So, yeah, we draw that inference. So, he already existed. so what was his uh, existence like before the creation of man there are some passages like isaiah chapter 14 okay we can look at that isaiah 14 verses 1 through 25 you can uh, read through it but what i'll do is uh, i will ask one of you to read for me uh, from verse 12 isaiah 14 uh, please read from verse 12 till verse 21 anyone can you please turn to these uh, scriptures I'll go. Which one is? Yeah, uh, it's Isaiah fourteen, and uh, you can read from verse twelve, Joy. Okay. Yeah. So, how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low, na- low the nations. You said in your heart, "I will ascend to heaven, to the heavens, and I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Sefon." No worries, just go on. Yeah. 
Okay, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought, but you are brought down to the realm of death, to the depths of, of the pit. Those who see you star, star at you, they ponder your fate, your fate. Is this the man who shook, who shook the earth? and made kingdoms tremble, the man who made the, words a, the world a, a wilderness, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go, go home. All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own thumb. But you are cast out of your thumb like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword, those who descend to the stones of the pit, like a corpse tremble on the foot. You will not join them in burial, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. Let the offering, the offering of the wicked never be mentioned again. Prepare a place to slaughter his children for the sins of their ancestors. They are not to rise to inherit the land and cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up. Yeah, Joy, uh, we could uh, stop there. So verse 21. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So that's good. It gives us an idea. You know, you see how uh, Satan fell from heaven and uh, there is a mention of the name, O Lucifer son of the morning so he had a name called lucifer okay uh, and you also see his attitude his pride comes through so strongly because he is telling himself you have said in your heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god stars of god referring to the hosts of heaven you know, many other creatures in heaven above everyone i am going to become greater than them i will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high so he is trying to compete with god and he's saying, I will be like God. And remember, this is how he deceived Adam and Eve as well. He told them, you can be like God if you eat of the fruit, the forbidden fruit uh, in the garden. So he, in a sense, has deceived himself that he will be like God. He wants to be like God. Um, he says, uh, uh, yet God says, come on. Satan, Lucifer, this is what you think. But we switch to what God is saying. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So pride, right? Through his pride, he is deceiving himself. He's exalting himself. But God says, no. What, what happens? You know, Pride goes before a fall, uh, is what God's word says. So he's brought down. God says, no, you're not going to ascend. But you will be brought to the depths of the pit okay and then uh, it goes on to say how uh, sad his his uh, situation is going to become because of his pride now let's also look at one more passage so you see we are getting some understanding about satan through all these passages that's why i'm making you read it now we can also read ezekiel ezekiel chapter 28 um, read uh, from verse 12 to verse 16 please anyone Ezekiel 28 verses 12 to 16. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse yes. 12. 12 to 16, ma'am. Yes, yes, Rosalind. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, 
you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in eden the garden of god every precious stone was your covering the sardius topaz and diamond beryl onyx and jasper sapphire turquoise and emerald with gold the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created you were the anointed cherub who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you by the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within and you sinned therefore i cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of god and i destroyed you o covering cherub from the midst of the fiery stones your heart was lifted up because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor i cast you to the ground i laid you before kings that they might gaze at you you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities by the iniquity of your trading therefore i brought fire from your midst it devoured you and i turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you all who knew you among the peoples were astonished at you you have become a horror and shall be no more forever thank you yes yes rosalind that's good that's good so rosalind read for us uh, from ezekiel 28 uh, she read you know all the way i think from verse 12, 12 she read to, to 19 to 19 yeah yes. good okay so that's a uh, again you know we are able to gain insights um you might wonder why does it say earlier in um uh, isaiah 14 babylon and here it says tyre okay king of tyre so uh, don't get confused by it we also notice that you know these earthly kings there is a mention of such names but there is a parallel in the demonic hierarchy okay so uh, uh, you it's comparative satan is lucifer is called as king of babylon and here again in ezekiel 28 when you see king of tyre uh, tyre is a place in palestine so there are earthly kingdoms however in scripture you would also see a parallel so though babylon is on earth parallelly satan is referred to as the king of babylon king of tyre uh, now if we study some more you know some more passages daniel chapter 10 there you have uh, the prince of persia the prince of greece you know they come to to stop the prayers of daniel is there greece and persia on the earth yes there there are these you know these places these nations there are physical human kings here uh, but we also know that there are territorial spirits there are territorial principalities so it's as if the kingdom of satan has created a a, a parallel kingdom so to to influence persia to influence greece there are demonic principalities over regions and we see you know parallel kings so prince of persia is a demonic principality prince of greece is a demonic principality and then you know uh, again here so don't get confused when you read you know these terminologies and you think uh, oh but it's referring to earthly kings no it's actually referring to the uh, principalities okay and also we saw how satan is referred to Uh, as king of babylon uh, and king of tyre okay uh, what else did we see in this passage we saw how god is actually praising him and saying that you know in verse 12 uh, uh, you were the seal of perfection 
full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So what idea does that give us about uh, this creature Lucifer or this person Lucifer that he was before the fall, he had beauty. Okay, so it's not a bad thing, right? He, he was made beautiful. He was created perfect. So there was beauty in him. But we know that, you know, after he he uh, became proud, right? That was corrupted. So it became like a corrupted beauty, okay? Uh, but when God created him, he was made full of beauty. Uh, and again, you know, wisdom is something that is pointed out in that same verse. Uh, we are told that Satan had was he was full of wisdom so full of wisdom but now what is he doing with the original good wisdom that god gave now it's all corrupted so his thinking the pattern of deceiving people accusing god's uh you know um, we who are made in god's image it's all been twisted now so we use the term corrupted. So that same understanding, good understanding which God gave him, he is now using it in the wrong way. What else? What else uh, is described about him? We are told that, you know, he had wealth. So you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Okay. So, wealth, precious stones, gold. So who has things like this? Who is given you know, things like this? Someone who is wealthy. So, was Lucifer wealthy? Yeah, he had uh, access to everything. Okay, and we are told the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So well-crafted workmanship, meaning uh, he does not just have musical instruments. Timbrels and pipes are music. So was he associated with music? Yes. So why do you think God made uh, Lucifer? He is an angel. Okay, who was created for worship, created beautifully, you know, blessed with all the wealth, blessed with music, timbrels and pipes and workmanship, you know, beautifully crafted instruments. Why? Why did God create uh, this angel so wonderfully? For worship. God's intention was for Lucifer to worship him. Now, let's move on and see what else was he blessed with originally. He was anointed. We are told that he was anointed. So in verse 14, you were anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. So where was Lucifer as an angel in the presence of God? He was blessed. He was anointed. Uh, and you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. So he was given a beautiful place in the presence of God. Now, let's also see what else um, is part of his original creation. In verse 16, you know, we are told, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you and you sinned. So by the abundance of your trading means he probably had some skill and understanding about business. So uh, he knows, he understands business. And then we are also told in verse, um, not here, but in Isaiah 14, 12, uh, we can relate rulership over nation. So all this capability was given to this angel, Lucifer. But unfortunately, from verse 16, we see that he became filled with violence within and you sin. Now, who deceived? Many people ask the question. Satan is a deceiver. He deceives mankind. Who deceived him? Okay, let me ask you this question. Who deceived Satan? He was created quite uh, nicely. Originally, he was perfect. Who deceived Satan? What would be uh, your thought on that? Any idea? Uh, like, is it his own pride deceived him? Yeah. That's what it seems like, uh, uh, Zeli Toli, when we read that, you said in your heart, right? So, 
you know this is a warning against pride pride has the ability to lead us into self deception so it did not take another person to deceive satan his own pride he said i will ascend i will become like the most high so that is why you know the bible says uh, when you read about all the other weaknesses uh, of uh, uh, of the flesh things like lust things like unforgiveness you know god says okay you know you overcome it you walk in the spirit um and uh, you know be holy uh, so there are there are all those ways of of uh, overcoming these challenges but we have a very strong warning against pride and scriptures say that god resists the proud okay and he gives grace to the humble okay god resists the proud let me just give you that verse ha first peter 5 uh first peter 5 yeah let me post it for us it's a good uh scripture for us to be reminded about ha so first peter chapter 5 and verse part of that verse says chapter 5 and 5 so god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble so uh, it it's challenging thought you know you don't want god to be uh, in the opposition you want to be on god's team i want to be on god's team so what should i do to be on god's team walk humbly before the lord you know walk humbly at all times because you see the characteristic of satan everything was perfect he started out very nicely okay even if you say that uh, in ministry he was anointed he was a worshipper um, he had everything but he became puffed up maybe he would have thought oh nobody worships like me nobody is beautiful like me you know nobody so at some point he just became so proud and that pride leads us to self deception okay self deception is we no longer have the ability to accept truth we accept a different truth or a different reality and nobody can convince us otherwise you know i think i am the greatest if, even if 10 people come and tell me no you're not you know uh, it's not correct what you said in my own head i'm self deceived i'm saying no what all of you are saying is wrong what i am saying is correct okay it's a very dangerous place to be for anyone uh, and uh, you see from the life of lucifer that he became proud that led to self deception and then you know the consequence to that you saw how god is telling him you are not going to go high up the way you are saying but i am going to pull you down Okay, so you will go down to Sheol, and uh, we again, you know, in these same passages also we see we read about the fall uh, of Lucifer, how he, you know, that he would fall to Sheol, and again another good passage would be from Romans twelve, uh, sorry, Revelation twelve. Now Revelation twelve, uh, uh, it's a prophetic. passage so when we read the the portions there some of it is from history and some of it is in the future okay so in prophetic passages it happens you know the way god speaks we have to understand or which part is for which time and then you know the whole interpretation of the prophetic passage so some portions of revelation 12 particularly uh verse 4 we see that that you know god uh, uh satan left heaven with one third of the angels so god cast him down and uh, he left heaven with one third of the angels so with all this we understand oh this is how satan was a beautiful angel created by god but through pride he became self deceived and god uh, again in revelation 12 verses 8 9 we see that he was cast out of heaven uh, yeah, revelation 12 4 he took one third of the angels and he left uh, heaven 
add you know, several other it's all in your notes you can go back and refer to all these verses uh, verses tell us you know, luke 4 6 john 12 31 1 john 5 19 all this tell us that he gained rulership of the earth by deceiving adam and eve okay so that is how he has become the god of this world and when we write that you no know, god of this world it's not capital g because obviously there is only one almighty sovereign god creator god um, father god whom we know but satan has become the ruler of this world that's what it means so small g we use generally you uh, letter small g god of this world in night i will only go through that uh, for us yeah so here uh, it says uh, yet michael the archangel in contending with the devil so there are many names given to satan we will study some more about uh, you know this this uh, creature lucifer for our understanding he is also called as the devil so jude 9 uh, it says contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation but said the lord rebuke you so you know uh, what i told us earlier when we talk about exercising our authority there are boundaries there are uh, there is a way of doing it you know we can't go about here archangel michael another heavenly creature uh, uh, you know somebody who is Uh, sent by god and you know we read about archangel michael in in certain places having the authority of an archangel even the angel is not rebuking the devil directly because the angel is not given the authority to do that the angel says the lord rebuke you because the angel is functioning by the boundaries and the authority structures that god has set okay so is it because the angel was respecting the devil no it's more like the angel was respecting the 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 structure of god the boundaries of god so the angel also did not go out of his given authority to say i rebuke you satan the angel didn't do that okay so what do we understand here you see there is there is a way in which we have to go about uh, exercising our authority against satan and uh, just because he is our enemy god is against him uh, we are against him you know we can't we can't uh, uh, do it in our own way we have to go by the principles of god's word so when i go against satan i would go against him with the name of jesus you know i would go and you know his origin and all of that so any any thoughts any questions at this point uh class i have a question about uh, like the boundaries that god has set yeah for the kingdom it's like how do i know where are the boundaries that i cannot um like abuse of them or how can i say that like not doing what um belongs to god right in terms of authority yes yes yeah good question joy um so you see we can get that understanding as we read through scripture and uh, how things are done in scripture for example let's take the angels okay uh, because we see uh, in hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 that angels are ministering spirits ministering spirits means spirits of service so their task is to do uh, the work of god and very specifically we see in hebrews 1:14 that they are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation which means you and me for the believer the angels are sent to help us now 
just because i have angels as my ministering spirits i can't go ordering around you know i can't say oh angels come do this angels take care of my house angels do this take care of my child uh, you need to do this i can't command like that so if you go back to the psalms um, i don't know what verse it is but there is a verse which says that you know uh, they go by the word of god okay, let me try to get that for you ha huh. uh yeah so i think it is psalm 103 verse 20 uh which says uh, you his angels you mighty ones who do his bidding who obey his word who obey his word okay so based on this understanding yes they are in spirits of service but i have to build on it another verse is saying that they obey the word of god so if i want to activate angels in my life i have to go through the word okay that would be mm -hmm. the boundary you understood joy yeah yeah so whenever i make a declaration if i say like, like you know the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them it's a scripture the word of god so the moment i say it the moment i believe it and i say okay i have angelic protection because it is written that the angel of the lord encamps so when i say that based on the word of god the angels are activated they take their position as uh, you know for my protection so that's how it works yes and mm. for us like the children of god mm how it works because okay the bible says that jesus have given us authority but yeah. in, in in what way we are not like trying to be like god mm -hmm. and having like them like trying to act like how he he only has to to, to act mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm okay yeah like, uh, uh, in the, sorry in like i have heard this teaching like you cannot cast out principalities or some other stuff like uh, demonic uh beings that are like stronger and you know because it, it's i don't know it's they say like um only god can do that or just like you're not you don't have this authority but i don't know in the bible says like jesus asked us just to be actually like what he did and better things that he did here in the earth so how this teaching is like miss giving misunderstanding of the word like principalities is like this kind of kings over nations and all that stuff and then we cannot fight against them because they are above us and blah 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 so how true is that yeah so uh yeah joy i think this is also this kind of teaching is also because um uh it has been around for many years uh, and i think it goes back to the teaching on ground level warfare uh and uh, you know higher levels of warfare there is some teaching on that uh which is very popular um and also you know jude 9 that we just said you know the angel michael said the lord rebuke you so based on all these scriptures um there is an understanding that uh as believers we don't have authority we only have authority on spirits uh, on the earth so you know when we are casting out a demon out of a person yeah we can do that but if it is a territorial spirit you know like a prince of persia or a, a prince of greece it's a principality okay we'll study about all these things later so without going into too much of uh, depth on this what i would say is now we see uh, in god's word that as a believer we can contend against principalities and powers of darkness because jesus has given us authority over everything all the works of the devil mm -hmm. okay 
so you don't have to be afraid to take on a principality as a believer but there is a way of doing it okay 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 i get it okay. thank you yeah yeah uh, yeah no problem so what way of doing it again let me just tell you see daniel he was praying for an answer for uh, something daniel 10 uh, he didn't really had have to rebuke can do all those things what did he do 21 days he prayed he only prayed so how is he how is his authority working in this he's only praying and god sends michael michael is fighting prince of persia prince of greece to bring the answer to daniel so when i'm praying you just understand so there are different ways in which uh, you can actually exercise the authority so it doesn't look like you're always standing and commanding and binding and rebuking it doesn't look like that all the time okay thank you sure sure so we'll we'll build on um, all this uh, as we go along but uh, yeah good good thoughts good questions uh, your thinking that is important okay let me just take uh, the question here on the chat uh, nicholson says uh, pastor what possible trade could the devil be involved in at heaven what could he possibly be trading honestly i've never thought about it nicholson uh and uh, this again would be in the realm of speculation because we don't have at least from what i know right now i don't think we have information so maybe you can ask this question in the mentoring hour <laughs> pastor ashish can answer it hopefully uh i don't know i mean i really don't know yeah sorry for disappointing you okay great thank you all right so fine let's uh, wrap up today's class uh, let's pray and i want to request someone else so far whoever has prayed uh, thank you for praying but uh, anyone who has not prayed in this uh, semester please go ahead and pray and we we can close today's class All right uh, can i pray yes please yes uh, lord god our heavenly father we just thank you for this time we thank you for this uh, bible college lord we thank you for this opportunity that we can all gather together and learn from your word and grow in your word lord even as we learn lord we pray that your word will just take uh, seed in us and we pray that we walk in your authority lord and in your through your word lord we thank you for all this learning we bless pastor nancy and we thank you for the blessing she is to us we bless each one of the students lord as we are in different countries we pray that we'll be able to go forth and uh, reap the harvest lord in the right time we pray this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen 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 thank you thank you nicholson uh yeah I'm blessed by that prayer and thank you everyone for connecting keep growing in your understanding of the believers authority and also use it okay so god bless you bye for now meet you later thank you pastor bye thank you thank you joy bye 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 everyone bye roslyn nicholson anita rupi